Welcome back to Jerusalem. Now, those lights you can see over my shoulder, that is the old city of the Jerusalem. Those are the illuminated ramparts of this extraordinary piece of historical real estate. The noise you can hear below me is a party going on right now in a sort of marketplace upstairs at the infinity pool of the Orient Hotel where we're staying. There's a wedding party. It is a parallel universe to the place that I woke up in this morning, Gaza, only an hour's drive from here. But to try and bring those two universes a little bit closer together, that is the purpose of the visit of the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, who arrived here today to sprinkle some American diplomacy and perhaps clout and to cement his support for the ceasefire which seems to be holding between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Now, he's been holding talks with both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank, because as we know, America does not recognize Hamas. He has promised millions of dollars in aid to help rebuild Gaza after the devastating 11-day battle, which has seen vast swathes of Gaza destroyed and more than 250 people killed. But little word, to be honest, of the two-state solution, apparently favored, still favored, by President Biden. Jerusalem, arguably the most congested religious and political real estate on the planet. Prime location for insoluble trouble, clocking up as many failed peace initiatives as there are notches in its ramparts. So what about America's emissary? We can actually shake hands. I know, it's a nice change. Social distancing may be out, but what's the political distance between Secretary of State Blinken and Prime Minister Netanyahu? You wouldn't know it from the bonhomie, but it was pressure from Washington that forced Israel to stop bombing Gaza. The language from the podium emphasized Israel's right for self-defense, but there was also some balm for the Palestinians. Uh, we know that to prevent a return to violence, uh, we have to use the space created uh, to address a larger set of underlying uh, issues and challenges. Uh, and that begins with tackling the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza and starting to rebuild. The first point is uh, a vote of thanks to President Biden and you for uh, firmly supporting Israel's right of self-defense. Uh, I have to say that uh, Secretary Blinken in a previous capacity in 2014 when we had uh, another round of engagement against Hamas aggression uh, supported us by having uh, Iron Dome replenishments, a quarter of a billion dollars that you personally shepherded through the system very quickly and we remember it and we're very grateful to you. And you are giving meaning to this now again with replenishments of Iron Dome interceptors. Israel and America almost talking at cross purposes. A far cry from the days when Trump and Netanyahu matched much more than just their ties. The true test of America's newfound commitment to engage the Palestinians will be found amongst the broken minarets and recent ruins of Gaza. So you moved your wife's car here to keep it safe? And she wanted to bring it back. I said, no, keep one here and we take one. This is the safest place. And that's what happened. But no worry, don't worry. We will buy a new one. Can the Americans persuade people like Faisal al Shawa? that they're serious about rebuilding office blocks and trust. A Gaza businessman who lived in the U.S., whose three sons still live there, and who is no fan of Hamas. Enough is enough. This is the fourth time. When is the fifth time? You encourage one like me to rebuild again? Will you rebuild again? Will you rebuild? Of course I will, but it's, I, you think it's the good decision? I don't know. You should assure me now. We always, every war we have. We are the international community. Maybe we need, we need humanitarian aid, but we don't need your donation. We need an assurance, security assurance. We want an insurance. If this happens again, they pay me. I ask everybody, come and pay me for my damages. The loss of life, God pays us. But money, it's our fortune. Hamas is part of the problem, but also part of any solution. What can persuade them to recognize Israel's right to exist and to stop firing rockets at Israeli civilians? What can persuade them that Israel's loss is not their gain and vice versa?